When entering the 16th century church dedicated to St Peter in Limpia, Spain, attention is immediately captured by the beautiful life-size figure of the crucified savior located above the main altar. The crucifix known as Christ of the Agony is between two life-size statues of the sorrowful Virgin Mary and the apostle St John. The miraculous crucifix is believed to have been the work of Pedro de Mina who died in 1693 and the crucifix was given to the church by Father Diego de la Piedra who had been born at Limpias in 1716. The crucifix is a meditation on the sufferings of our Lord portraying him in the final moments of his agony. The holy crucifix was venerated in a Franciscan convent in Cardiz. and later was gifted to the village of Limpias according to tradition the crucifix had saved cardis from a massive tidal wave that was threatening to engulf the city in 1755 the desperate population facing the destruction of their own town took out in procession the venerated image of christ of the agony the waters advancing upon the city suddenly stopped and receded before the holy image around the year 1765 the crucifix along with the statues of the virgin mary and the apostle john standing under the cross were transferred to the church of st peter in limpias the most important events took place from 1919 to 1924 after that period there have been some individual manifestations but nothing comparable to the earlier mass scale occurrences The public knowledge of the miraculous occurrences started in March 30th 1919 when it became widely known that the image of Jesus was moving opening and closing its eyes and the body seemed to be alive suffering sweating and bleeding Limpias quickly became a place of pilgrimage receiving pilgrims from all of Europe the little village in northern Spain became for some years Europe's most popular pilgrimage place after Rome. By 1921, Limpias was receiving more visitors than Lourdes. However, there were miracles reported several years before the mass scale events. In August of 1914, the Polish father Antonio Lopez was installing electrical lighting over the high altar. As he stood on the ladder his head was right next to that of the image of Santo Cristo observing Jesus' face he was astonished to see that the eyes were closed the father remembered well that the statue's eyes had always been open as he was thus staring at the image its eyes suddenly opened the priest shocked lost his balance and fell down from the ladder when he told the sacristan of what he just saw the san christian didn't show himself surprised for he had already heard of similar occurrences related by the people in march of 1919 two capuchin fathers came to preach a mission in limpias after the mass that concluded the mission one of the capuchins entered the sacristy to report that something extraordinary was happening with the image of santo cristo Some girls who were close to the altar noticed that the statue of Jesus was opening and closing its eyes. Soon, many of the adults, men and women, began exclaiming witnessing the same. When the priest finally managed to get the people to leave the church, one of the capuchins climbed a ladder to inspect the image. He confirmed that the face and the neck of Jesus were wet as if sweating. The second set of miraculous manifestations took place on Palm Sunday, April 13, 1919. Prominent men of Limpias, mocking the hysteria and superstition, approached the altar looking upon the crucifix. Suddenly, one of them, pointing at the crucifix, fell to his knees. At once, the other man also fell to his knees, crying for mercy. and proclaiming his belief in the miracle the notice of events 
quickly spread around the province and soon masses of people started coming to Limpias to witness the miracle. Within six months, more than 100,000 people visited the church. Among the countless visitors and pilgrims were many members of Spanish and European nobility. The King of Spain, Alfonso XIII, visited the sanctuary and the Queen did so more than once, as did their children. Interestingly, not all those who witnessed these happenings saw the same thing. Thus, any sort of optical illusion can safely be ruled out. As Baron von Kleist, who visited Limpias and wrote a book about the manifestations reported, many said that the Saviour looked at them, at some in a kindly manner and at others gravely, and yet others with a penetrating and stern glance. Many of them saw tears in his eyes. Others noticed that drops of blood ran down from the temples pierced by the crown of thorns. Some saw froth on his lips and sweat on his body. Others again saw how he turned his eyes from side to side and let his gaze pass over the whole assembly of people. Or how, at the benediction, he made a movement of eyes as if giving the blessing. In short, the most varied manifestations were observed on this crucifix. A journalist who witnessed the miracle reported, I could perceive the movements of the jawbone as if he was saying two syllables with his lips. I shut my eyes quite tight and asked myself, what will he have said? The answer was not long in coming, for in my innermost self, I clearly heard the significant and blessed words. Love me. Indeed, the religiosity and piety saw a strong increase as a result of the events in Olympias. Innumerable sinners converted and reformed their lives. Religious and sacramental life flourished, and a general reform of customs became very notable in the whole region. Thus, the miracles associated with Santo Cristo of Olympias brought countless souls to God to repentance and, we can hope, ultimately to heaven. There were many miraculous healings associated with the Christ of Olympias. By 1920, doctors certified as inexplicable more than thousands such healings. Some of these happened instantly upon a visit to the Church of St. Peter. Some occurred once the pilgrims returned home, and yet Others took place when the sick were touched with an object that had been touched to the miraculous crucifix. While the church authorities were observing the happenings in Olympias and have blessed the pilgrimages, granted indulgences to pilgrims, and praised the wonderful effects on the religious revival, there was never any official pronunciation or church judgment on the miracles. The Bishop of Santander informed the Holy See of the events and introduced a process on July 18, 1920, in which Rome was notified of the miraculous cues and manifestations. One year later, a plenary indulgence was granted for a period of seven years to all the faithful who visited the Holy Crucifix. One might think as to why our Lord made such manifestations of His agony. That is because He yearns to draw men out of their sinful ways. Everyone knows that sin is an insult to God. By committing a mortal sin, a person expels God from his heart, refuses Him the filial respect He deserves as Creator and rejects His grace. If we commit a mortal sin, we crucify our Lord in our hearts and thus imitate those who killed Him. And often so, we do so shortly after having glorified Him with good deeds. Thus, we re-enact the whole of Christ's passion, from Palm Sunday to the crucifixion. How often this happens in men's souls today. To repair these offences, we should become souls of reparation. If our virtue is insufficient for the task, we should practice a sincere humility that stems from intelligent, sensible and solid reasoning, not from flowery words and emotional 
chest beating this alone will suffice to console our lord in his affliction perhaps that is why our lord performs so many wonders for the eyes of believers and unbelievers at limpias he demonstrated the agony of his death and the extent of his love for us not only to invoke sentiments of pity and repentance but also to love him in return